Why did you feel like it was important to come out for Chris Carver? Well, we all saw how many people turned up when George Floyd was murdered by the police in the US, and I think it's happening on our very doorstep. Like, I'm 24 years old. It could it could have happened to any of us, and um, it's tragic. And we should be we should all fucking the whole country should be mourning his death too. The police are out of control. This is the fifth or sixth protest action demonstration here outside New Scotland Yard that I've been to this year alone. There are so many reasons why it's 100% clear that racism, misogyny, misconduct is rife. The institution is rotten. The leadership have done next to nothing about it. They try and brush it under the carpet. So I knew I had to be here because if we don't raise our voice on this issue, we're not going to see the change that we need. This institution is responsible since 1990 for the deaths of one 1,800 individuals. So history has shown us that it takes organization. It's going to take a coordinated response. It's going to take the people that are fighting misogyny and racism to come together to say enough is enough because this institution has shown how stubborn it is, how intractable it is. So this matters, but uh, I want to see this be the beginning of something, not the end of something. He deserved the right to go through due process and for you to prove him to be guilty or not guilty in a court of law. No officer shouldn't feel comfortable in murdering a young um, innocent youth because he's innocent until proven guilty and then feel like after that he can get away with it. It's not going to happen on our watch. We need answers. That's the main reason why we're here marching. An investigation shouldn't take this long. Right? They're probably waiting for the Queen's funeral. But that doesn't matter. People die every day. You know what I mean? And we need, a, we need an investigation, impulsive investigation of why this police officer shot this unarmed youngster. Got his whole life ahead of him. And it keeps happening over and over again. We are sick and tired of this. They've tried to limit as much as possible the, the information that comes out. That totally, that totally messes with everyone's grief over this man's death. Um, by taking away the facts, by taking away the possibility to know what's happened, how can the family properly mourn? I think we've been protesting about deaths of black people at the hands of the police for some time, for decades. And I think since the Black Lives Matter uprising in 2020, I think there's an absolute unanimous feeling across this, this country and especially in the black community that enough is enough. Us, the silent anti-racist majority are here, we're here to support them, but actually to send a message to that rotten group over the way in Downing Street, to see and send a message to the whole of the establishment that in the midst of the crisis that we're facing, racism will not divide us races. We will not have racism inflicted upon us along with everything else that we're facing. Uh, my friend Roger Sylvester um, died in very close proximity to the police, I think I have to say legally, in 1999. I don't think until then I worked with his family on their justice campaign. I had any idea, to be honest, what black families go through, the absolute torment, the absolute trauma what campaigning did to them. They fought for seven years and were still not really able to get justice. I saw what it did to them, to his mum and his dad, to his siblings, to his cousins. You know, it's agonising. And we were told lessons were learned. Here we are again. Here we are again. And I will be here every time because we have to be. We have to be. Well, for change to actually happen, I think people need to start listening and I'm pleased to see that people are. Everything that the family have asked for so far has been granted because of the strength of the movement that they've got behind them and that is really important. And then back in my place of work in the House of Commons, people need to change things, change that bureaucracy that stops families from receiving justice sooner. So one key example, apparently there's a, a, a fact in law which makes it so that once a police officer does this they're not automatically suspended that law has to be changed there is no other profession that I can think of where something you do leads to somebody's death and you stay in your post it has to be automatic suspension people have to be held accountable
I think when we talk about police brutality, it's important that we remember it's not just police brutality. Policing is an inherently violent institution. It's an inherently racist institution. And so what does change and transformation actually look like given that context? We need to be removing the resources, the tools, the power that they have, because whilst they continue to have those things, they will continue to brutalize and kill and inflict trauma and pain in our communities and to our people. So the wider demands have to focus on that system. And they can be relevant to this case. I mean, we need to talk about lifting the anonymity. We need to talk about immediate suspensions without pay or police involved in police violence, including police killings. We need to talk about all of the other tools of surveillance that kind of are relevant to this case, but also impact particularly young black people day to day and more widely the culture of violence that we see day to day in policing, that's gang databases, that's strip searching, that's the culture of stop and search, the culture of impunity. There's so much that we need to fight. We need to do that united.